Dynamics 365 Business Central of Finance and Supply Chain Management. What is the best ERP option from Microsoft that covers my company needs? This is the very common question across all Dynamics 365 buyers. But unfortunately, from all the information you can find over the internet about the topic, it will fall in, into one of two categories. Either extremely simplified and biased, and you can find some magic numbers like if you have more than 200 employees, then select Finance Supply Chain Management, if you have less, then buy Business Central, which is honestly sounds quite weird. And the second one is very vague and complex and doesn't really highlight the core differences between applications. So in this episode, we are going to shatter common myth and we'll try to make Dynamics ERP selection easier. So let's get started. At first, let's try to figure out product naming. And Microsoft have made several rebrandings over the years that literally confuses everyone. In order to clarify that, let's refer to the product history. In the late 90s, there were two completely different products from two different vendors called Accept and Navision. But in 2002, they were acquired by Microsoft to represent its portfolio of ERP solutions. And later they got brand new names Microsoft Dynamics AX and Microsoft Dynamics Now. But a few years ago, Microsoft decided to put all its business applications under the same Dynamics 365 umbrella, representing its suit in the cloud, like what they did with Microsoft Office before. But in fact, these two products are still are two completely different platforms. AX has become finance and operation platform and now was further divided into different licenses and SKUs, like supply chain management, finance, HR, depending on the desired features. But it's still the biggest and flagship ERP offer. Microsoft primarily invests in finance and operation platform to compete with other tier one ERP vendors. Okay, enough has become business central, aka BC, and is sold in two different licenses and SKUs, essential and premium. Premium provides slightly more features, for example, manufacturing functionality, but it still has less capabilities than, than finance and operation platform. Now, the question is how to differentiate them. And this is where the first myth came from. <music> Business Central is for small and medium businesses and finance operations is for enterprises. Even Microsoft tend to use this differentiation for simplicity, but it's not actually true. Let's set aside the hypothesis that finance operation as a big ERP product is made for enterprise-grade business processes, and that's why small companies might not need it. It sounds reasonable, right? But let's look further. Is there any reason why finance operation is not suitable for mid-sized businesses or mid-market manufacturers? No, there is not. We will review the cost component later, but even if you rephrase the question, saying accept the cost, is there any reason why Business Central fits mid-sized companies better? And the answer is still no. In fact, there is no capability or feature in Business Central that hasn't been represented in finance operation or better option by any means. But some fo fellow partners say the smaller the product, the better the user experience. And this is the second common myth. Myth number two, Business Central user experience is better because product is smaller. I presume it came from people who had experience with old-fashioned on-premises ERP software. In old days, ERP users were really struggling. UI was badly designed comparing to modern best practices. Since users were not in focus of ERP product designers, the bigger the product was, the more efforts were targeted towards feature-rich functionality in trade-off to users' productivity. Fortunately, nowadays, most main ERP vendors understand that users' productivity is a key to implementation success. From Microsoft's perspective, both Finance and Operation and Business Central has modern and intuitive UI made up from business role-focused workspaces and unified experience across all Microsoft products, including Office 365 and Power BI. It is well organized and system provides the tools to fine tune user interface to cover employee needs. Now let's discuss ERP costs. Within ERP implementation, there are three main cost categories that represent the total cost of software ownership. Licenses, implementation cost, and cost of maintenance and operation. In the new cloud world, the two biggest cost components is subscription licenses and implementation services. Because infrastructure management is taken by Microsoft, and both Finance Operation and Business Central 
uh, software as a service offerings. But here another myth creeps up. Myth number three, implementation cost of finance operation is higher than business centrals. And emphasis is made on always higher. I heard that a lot from other Microsoft partners who refer to overall statistics. But you should understand, in terms of implementation services, there's only the scope that matters. And by implementation scope, I mean what functions and business processes you want to automate. Remember, if scope of ERP implementation is similar, the cost for both finance operation and business central should be the same. For experienced Dynamics 365 consultant, it doesn't matter how many features ERP product has overall, so just configure the ones you need. They don't randomly try every feature before it fits the business. Okay, but what about consulting price rate? The consulting price rate depends, but it doesn't depend on product you selected, but rather consulting company brand, the market it operates, industry factors, and other product agnostic factors. The next category is licensing. Please welcome myth number four. Finance and operation license is always two times more expensive than Business Central. And if you look at official Microsoft Dynamics 365 page, it does look like two times more expensive. Well, it does really make sense for the small amount of users. And when you do not consider some extra licenses that you need to purchase additionally. For example, ISV solution that almost always required from mid to complex Business Central implementation. And I will explain why later in this episode. So, in order to explain all the shell prices, I have prepared a small diagram. On the x-axis, we have the user count, and on the y-axis, we have the total licensing cost. As both products are cloud-based subscription, they are priced per user per month. First, let's take a look on Business Central licensing cost. You only need to, to buy one user license to deploy the system. When the user count increases, the slope is almost linear. The cost for essential is $70 and $100 for the premium user license. Let's say you have 20 users with 10 essentials and, and 10 premium with a total cost of $1,700 per month. No other subscription license available in Business Center. Now finance and operation license and costs. It starts from 20 full user minimum license requirement. You cannot buy less in order to deploy the system. The average price for finance operation is between $180 and $210 per user per month. So in our previous example for 20 users, you might need 10 supply chain management license and 10 supply chain management plus finance add-on. The total will be $3,900 per user per month. And it's more than two times expensive than Business Central if 20 users is enough. But finance operation has so-called activity user license that costs $50 a month and designed it for financial clerks, shop floor workers, field service engineers who just need to perform one function in the system. What we see in actual customer implementations most of the workers will just need few functions to perform the daily job. So when the user count goes above 20, what we see that the price difference become lower and the slope goes towards business central price. We had an ERP implementation project for 125 users in manufacturing company. And what we found by calculating the ERP project for them is that the licensing cost for 125 users is very close to business central cost. But finance operation provides much richer and broad set of capabilities, especially considering future business growth. Here is the calculation example. So finance operation licensing cost is not always two times more expensive than business central. Now the question is, what about mid-sized companies? How many employees should work with the system? Is ERP just a tool for accountants, logistics and sales managers alike? The answer is no. Even first-line workers should have an access to the system if you want to stay competitive. And this is why. By implementing ERP software, companies typically want to optimize and automate business processes, provide more visibility and control to managers and executives, and also have modern IT platform that could support future business growth. And this last point is especially important if you want to get the most from your digital transformation journey. This is where your strategy should go toward implementing Industry 4.0 principles. At the very core, Industry 4.0 principles are First, no more paper for all business processes. And Excel sheets doesn't count as well. So business data should be collected and processed within business systems. 
humans primarily talk to and get information from the software. Second is connected application stack. All systems, all departments and their counterparts should receive and publish data within the same platform, meaning it should have open architecture as an easy and cost-efficient way to connect and make integrated business processes when business needed without huge investments in maintenance and integration development. And unified data model, when every system interprets and understands data equally. And the last point everyone dreams about is AI predictions and real-time analytics. Only by having first two principles implemented, you can achieve this. Now let's see how business central and finance operations counts toward these principles. I will talk primarily about manufacturing business, but this information is relevant to other industries as well. The core capabilities of both systems are similar. They both can do order management, accounting, master planning, but let's look a bit deeper. How small implementation of business central looks like? Well, business buy few business central licenses for accountants, but other personnel like shipping clerks and shop floor operators do not have access to the system. By the end of the shift, they provide the information on paper to the supervisor. Then supervisor or accountant keys his data in ERP. Does it follow industry for that or normal paper principle? No, it's not. Does it enable real-time analytics and support data-driven decisions? Of course not. So what can business do to enable this? It needs to add these first-line users to the system and provide them with optimized user interface so their jobs can be registered in real time. Ideally with some tablet with a touchscreen interface. Does Business Central has optimized mobile user interface for warehouse and manufacturing execution real time? No, not off the shelf. You need to buy separate software, paying extra money for these products and its integration to Business Central. And especially if you buy it from non-Microsoft partner, this integration cost could be significant. Do you also need to buy Business Central license for these users? Yes, and it will cost about $100 a user a month, no matter how many features are going to be used. Next, every modern production manager wants to have overall equipment effectiveness calculated, ideally in real time. OEE has three components, productivity, how many units we, we produced comparing to ideal production rate, the quality, how many non-conformances we had divided by total units produced, and availability, how many unplanned downtimes we had comparing to planned asset utilization schedule. To follow industry 4.0 principles, we need to have all this information calculated and stored within the system. Is any asset management capabilities available in Business Central? No, asset management module is not available off the shelf. Again, you will need to buy a separate solution and integrate it with Business Central. What about finance and operation? Asset management module available out of the box, already integrated with accounting and production plus. Next, in current circumstances, business wants to collaborate electronically with external parties, like customers and vendors. For example, simple vendor portal, where vendor could upload their invoices, update delivery dates, and all of that. For customers, it's nice to have some e-commerce portal where customers can, can place their orders without the need to make a call to a manager. Is it available on Business Central? Not supported after the box, you need to buy a separate product or develop it yourself, including some integration costs. What about finance and operation? Vendor portal is available off the shelf. For customers, Microsoft offers B2B e-commerce portal that's sold as a separate product but it's already fully integrated with finance and operation platform. To handle further digital transformation movement, Microsoft have developed several microservices or add-ons that are only available for finance and operation platform. For example, planning optimization service that reduces MRP run on a big product database from hours to minutes, or IT intelligence service that simplifies ERP integration with the shop floor equipment. And my colleague have made very good overview. You can find the link down in the description. Another example is a hybrid deployment service to have manufacturing or warehouse execution work offline or in a separate cloud server while connection to the main ERP server is lost to ensure business continuity. Will any of these features be ported to the Business Central in the short term? No, unfortunately. I don't want to go too deep in the feature details. You can easily find out more over the internet. I just have emphasized the most important ones according to our implementation experience and customers' digital transformation needs. You can also check feature comparison from different industries' perspective in our article. Link will be in the description below. Mm -hmm. 
Summarizing all of that, if you are the company that wants to enhance digital maturity and you are not just local business with few dozen employees and you expect rapid growth in the next couple of years, then there is no real benefit of selecting Business Central over finance operation. Finance operation in this case is the right choice. Licensing cost difference is not that significant comparing to what you will get. Otherwise, you can consider Business Central as a, your ERP option. I know it will resonate with the mainstream idea that you might have heard from various sources, including Microsoft. But in the last few years, Microsoft business applications and overall ERP market has changed dramatically. A lot of new capabilities have been added to a finance operation in the first place. But unfortunately, what we see now, some Microsoft partners uh, follow their old business strategy and try to upsell their independent solutions to Business Central to just feed Business Central platform to what finance operation already have out of the box. While saying that Business Central is for small and medium businesses and finance operation is for enterprise scale. We want to challenge that oversimplicity. And it's exactly the reason we started this topic. That's what we think consulting partners should do. So I encourage you to contact us if you have any questions or need support in your ERP implementation journey. Have a good Dynamics experience and see you in the next episode.